Well, good day, beloved. This is Reverend Darren. You're watching The Teaching Room, where God speaks, of course, and we listen, we learn, we live His unchanging Word through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you're doing well this week in the Lord. Um, we're on this journey through the book of Amos, an incredible story of a common man called by God to give an uncommon uh, judgment message to the wickedness going on in Israel. And um, we're going to continue today in chapter 2. So you might want to get your, your uh, Bible ready and, of course, your, your heart ready as well. I want to mention our website, www.reverendaren.com. It is a resource site where we keep all our print studies. Um, there's some music there and other things that I think you'll find very inspiring for your walk and your witness in Jesus. So go there, enjoy, and partake. Also, if you're enjoying this um, YouTube channel, feel free to subscribe and tell others about it. For today, we're looking at Amos chapter 2. And... Boy, <laughs> more anger issues, as it turns out. Um, not just anger. You know, there is anger. There is righteous anger. But then there's another kind. It's rage. It's rage. It's murderous rage. That's what we see in the world today. I was just uh, watching the news the other day about a, a, another mass murder in the United States. And, you know, it breaks your heart to know the evil one is wreaking havoc in, la in the last days because he knows that his time is short. We're going to talk a little bit more about this rage that um, God, God hates um, self-righteous rage. The only kind of anger that's okay is, is righteous anger that comes from him. It's the kind of anger that cares about um, people, the protection of God's precious ones. Let's dig in today with um, Amos chapter 2 and verse 1. And it says this, it says, Thus saith the Lord. There's another one of those thus saith the Lord statements. Um, for three transgressions of Moab and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he burned the bones of the king of Edom into lime. And the modern rendition says this. This is what the Lord says. For three sins of Moab, even for four, I will not relent, because he burned to ashes the bones of Edom's king. Any way you slice it, there is rage operating here where it's not good enough to just uh, kill the king uh, of Edom, we need to then exhume him. We need to burn his bones uh, into a pile of ash or a puddle of lime, if you will. God absolutely forbids and hates this kind of rage in a person. And uh, here we see it way back then. Here we see it today. This spirit of rage in the world. Now, don't you think that that rage is really just an expression of the evil one taking advantage of his children, abusing his children, using his children to destroy the world, to uh, kill, destroy that which God holds us in holds in high value. This rage comes from the evil one who knows his time is short. Don't be panicked about it. But don't be unaware of the devil's schemes, beloved. Be aware that, that this fight we're fighting, we're not wrestling against um, 
people, flesh and blood. We're wrestling against principalities and powers in the heavenly places. There's a real battle going on that we can't see. And we, we must trust in the full armor of God, which is Jesus, putting on Jesus to fight this battle. Putting on the full armor every day. Just being aware, just being aware that we're covered in the blood of Jesus. There's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Be aware when you get up in the morning, there's going to be a battle. Even more so as time progresses. Just be aware. Going back to this verse for a second. Thus saith the Lord's statements. We've been going through those. Simply means this is what the Lord says. It's going to be done. It's, irrever it's irreversible, in other words. And what he's talking about is not a blip in your walk with God where you fall into sin and, and then you get up again. You say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Uh, I repent of this sin. And, and instantly God says, you are forgiven, child, through the blood of Jesus we're not talking about a right relationship with God where you're keeping short accounts every day and staying in communication with God. No, 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 no. This passage is talking about continual, unrepentant sin that gets worse and worse. As we said last week, it just keeps reproducing and reproducing, getting worse and worse and worse. That's what sin does. That's what war does. And it says right here, for three transgressions of Moab and for four. That's what he's saying. Continual sin. Continual sin. It's, God is not uh, religious and legalistic in the sense that he doesn't nitpick with our sins. He's very gracious. He's long-suffering. He's good. He's good. He's essentially good to us. He forgives us through Jesus. In our right relationship. He knows when our hearts are right with him. We want to get right with him as quickly as possible. Here we have this week in Amos 2. A situation that's the total opposite. It's a hardening of the heart. It's a turning to sin. And letting anger become um, uncontrolled rage. Think about the kind of person, but don't think too long on this, but think about the kind of person who isn't content to see a person just um, off the earth or dead. They want to see their body destroyed and burned into a pile of ash on the ground. Think about that for a second. See, are our minds... First of all, first of all, our hearts are wicked. How, how can we know our hearts truly? We can't. We can't. And the heart informs our mind. We conceive in the heart. We think in the mind. We live out in the life. How can we know, know the wickedness in, in our own hearts? We all think we're pretty good, you know, apart from Jesus. We... Think, yeah, I'm not so bad. You know, there's other people worse than me. Case in point, this this passage here. I would never do a thing like that. I'd never kill anyone. I'd certainly never burn their body. You know. Um, so what are we talking about? We're talking about the potential of man to do evil through his free will, apart from God, apart from the direction of the Holy Spirit who indwells us when we accept Jesus into our lives. So this is uh, on one hand shocking and then we look at the world today and we say no that's not so shocking after all. Look what the sin nature can really do. Uh, look what Satan can do through an uh, unredeemed person. It's horrifying. But again the devil will be done away with 
We know that from the Holy Bible. And Jesus has promised that every word, every word will be accomplished in that Bible. We know how the story ends, folks. No worries here. Keep in prayer regarding um, the Ukrainian-Russian war. Keep in prayer regarding uh, the mass shootings in the States. Keep in prayer your neighbor who may be struggling with addictions and depression. Keep in prayer um, your family members who are not yet um, saved. Just keep in prayer. As the Bible says, prayer with pray without ceasing. Amen. Let's continue here. God says here, because of these continual murderous sins, he will not turn away his punishment. It is going to be said, it's going to be done just as Amos prophesies here. And it says, I'm going to exact my justice. Why? Because he burned the bones of the king of Edom into lime. Because you went the extra distance to do evil. You went the extra distance to do e evil. And it says in Proverbs, God hates a heart that rehearses evil. Let me say that again. In Proverbs 6, it says, God hates a heart that rehearses evil. And he hates feet that are swift in running to mischief and carrying out that evil. It's on that famous list of things that God hates culminating with brethren that sow discord in the community, the church. God hates that. Wow. Amos 2 and verse 2. If you would go there with me, it says, But I will send a fire upon Moab, fighting fire with fire here. And it shall devour the palaces of Kiriath, and Moab shall die with tumult, with shouting, and with the sound of the trumpet. Modern translation, modern translation says, I will send fire on Moab that will consume the fortresses of Kiriath. Moab will go down in great tumult amid war cries and the blast of the trumpet. This is going to be Vengeance to end all vengeance. God is going to exact his justice, his perfect justice on this crime. It's not, I might send fire. <laughs> it says in both translations here, but I will send a fire. I will do this, and it shall devour all of your fortresses. All of those walls, all those military battalions are going to be destroyed by this fire. Supernatural fire, consuming fire, vengeful fire from God Almighty. Christian ladies, Christian gentlemen, Christian ch children, hear me out. Fear God today. The day will come when his grace will be lifted, his long-suffering will be exhausted, and he will exact justice on this earth. People say, well, why doesn't God step in and do something about this crime or that crime and th this war and that war? Let me tell you. God has promised that it is his to avenge. Don't you avenge anyone. Don't do it. Don't avenge anyone. Let God be your avenger today. Listen, it's right here in this verse. I will send a fire on Moab that will consume the fortresses 
of Kiriath. Moab will go down in great tumult amid war cries and the blast of the trumpet. This is a battle cry, a deafening roar of God's lion justice being exacted on these horrible crimes. We have to believe, beloved, today that God is just and he will come through with his promise to make all things right as it is written in his great book. Finally today, Amos 2 and verse 3. And I will cut off the judge from the midst thereof and will slay all the princes thereof with him, saith the Lord. Modern translation says, I will destroy her ruler and kill all her officials with him, says the Lord. That's just a simpler way of saying, saying the same thing. Keep in mind that these judges, if there was no king to speak of, these judges were the ones who had the supreme power in the land. There was no kings. The judges stepped in and they became the authority. So these are high uh, level officials we're talking about, the government in other words. And God is going to take them out. Why? Because they are leaders. They are leaders. They are responsible for what's going on. And this evil has a source, we know that. The evil one. But people ha have to pay a price for sin. The Bible is very, very clear. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man shall sow, that shall he also reap. We have to be very careful to keep short accounts with God. Let him wash us. Let him cleanse us. Let, us for let him forgive us day after day, and he will do so. Isn't that a wonderful truth? God takes care of our sin. He washes it away forever so we can have resumed relationship with him. He doesn't want us to be distant from him through hardened hearts. Hebrews 3.13. He wants you close today. He wants you close. You know, these, these extreme atrocities of the Moabites, and you know the Moabites descended from the sinful relationship between Lot and his eldest daughter, incest. They had a history of just taking advantage of people, these Moabites. A history of taking advantage of people. Murderous, evil. So God says, I will destroy her ruler and kill all her officials with him. The whole Government is about to be wiped out through this fire, this consuming fire that Amos is prophesying about. On one hand, we should have a reverent fear of God, knowing that, that his ultimate judgment day is coming for each one of us. Under Jesus, we have eternal life forever with him. Apart from Jesus, we're going to have to rely on our own self-righteousness. We have nothing else. It's either the righteousness of Jesus before God's judgment throne, or it's our righteousness. You get to choose. And I hope you'll choose Jesus today and accept him as your Lord and Savior. I don't want to see anybody going into eternity, trillions and trillions of years apart from our Creator God. No, <laughs> and that's not God's heart. That's not God's heart. But in this case, we're dealing with unrepentant sin in this passage here. I will destroy her ruler and kill all her officials with him, says the Lord. That's because these people are unrepentant. They hate God. They hate people. 
And what's God all about? God's all about his glory. God's all about loving people. This is an affront to God. And this is why he has to act the way he is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with this today, this simple thought, and that is, don't resist God. Um, if you feel him tugging at your heart today, maybe it's to become a Christian. Don't resist him. Submit to him. Accept Jesus. This is God's idea. Salvation is God's idea through, through Christ, his son. Accept him today. And also, if you're already a Christian, born again through the Spirit of God, and you hear his voice today to come on home, to turn from sin, to change your attitude, to give your heart back to him, to spend more time with him in prayer and the word, do it. <laughs> Submit to him. He loves you. And he knows what's best for you. Amen. God willing, we'll see you uh, next week on the teaching room where we will continue through chapter 2 of Amos. I hope, I hope you have a great uh, week in the Lord. Let me pray for you very briefly. Thank you, Father, for all those uh, watching and listening to the teaching room, God. Um, this is for the body of Christ to encourage people daily, Lord, that they wouldn't become hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Father, we humbly offer this teaching, your word, your inspiration through the Holy Spirit. Would you inspire your people this week? Would you strengthen your people this week, God? In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.